Welcome to this web lecture on uh, the weak topologies on uh, normal vector spaces. Throughout, we'll assume that X uh, is a uh, let X be a normed vector space. Okay. X dual and X double star R the dual and bi dual of X. Okay. Let us start first by defining what we call the weak topology. Okay, the first one. Okay, let X star belongs to the dual space. The map P X star from X into zero plus infinity defined by absolute value of X star of X. This is a semi norm. Is a semi norm. Okay. And if you take the family of semi norms, okay, the family P X star for X star in the dual, uh, this family of semi norm has the separation property. Or satisfy the separation property. Okay, this is coming from the properties of the dual space and the Anbanach theorem. Okay, therefore, this family defines, therefore, okay, this family defines a topology, a host of topology. Topology on X. So we have now two topologies. We have the topology of the norms. We have this new topology defined by this family of semi norm. Okay? And what we are going to see is that, in fact, the two topologies are different. Okay? So this topology is known uh, as the weak. To this is known as the weak topology. Uh, while the topology of the norm of the norm okay will be will be known will be called will be called the strong topology Uh, notation for the weak topology okay will be sigma of x x star okay or sometimes we will just write weak Topology. We we'll write weak. Okay. Um, recall from our lecture on semi norms and the topology defined by the semi norms that O is open for the weak topology, open for sigma of x x star, if and only if. For every x in O, there exists there exists x one star x n star in x star. Okay, and epsilon positive epsilon positive such that the set of x in x 
sorry, this is x0, uh, x i star of x minus x i star of x0 less than epsilon i equals 1 all the way to n. This is included in O. This is what you call a basis uh, of open uh, sets for the topology, okay? And here we can use epsilon i, but since there are only finites, if you take the minimum of the epsilon i's, this will do it, okay? It's one of the... so we can just take epsilon instead, okay? Okay, now... Uh, let uh, xn be a sequence in x, okay? We will say that xn converges weakly to x in x if and only if uh, using the uh, family this family here one can show that is the same as uh, let us first uh, use it this way so this will will converge to x if and only if there exists uh, for any neighborhood so here for any x uh, 1 star x n star in x for any epsilon positive so you have now the neighborhood and then there exists n0 such that uh, for every n in uh, uh, n uh, greater than n0 we have x i star of x n minus x i star of x less than epsilon. Uh, it's not very hard to see in fact, this is just using this uh, 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 basis of open sets that will define the uh, the one that I'm showing right here in red that will define the neighborhoods and then open sets etc etc but one can easily see that this means that the limit for any, sorry, for any for any uh, x star in x star in the dual space uh, the limit of x star of xn is equal to x star of x when n goes to infinity it's exactly the same okay so we will write we will write okay uh, xn converges to x as n goes to infinity okay or a weak limit of xn equals to x when n goes to infinity or sigma x x star limit of xn is equal to x when n goes to infinity okay so here uh, uh, pay attention that we have here half of the arrow that's for the weak topology people will put weak on the top of it they will just put here weak in case just to avoid any confusion okay and uh, all these notations one may find them in the literature okay um, it is obvious that uh, since x star of any vector x absolute value is less than norm of x star norm of x we have the following theorem since we have the following theorem beautiful theorem theorem 
let x be a normed vector space okay let xn be a sequence in x if <coughs> xn converges strongly meaning for the norm to x then xn converges weakly to x okay <coughs> this this is not true the converse is not true huh? the converse is absolutely not true the converse is not true in general Uh, I forgot to mention the remark here uh, that the weak limit, if it exists of a sequence, the weak limit is unique. So we have all the properties, okay, of the weak limit. Remark, okay, the weak limit enjoys all the properties of the strong limit so we have uniqueness uh, if a, a sequ as two sequences converges weakly then their sum will converge to the weakly to the sum of their uh, limit etc etc most of the results are uh, uh, is right so next uh, let xn be weakly convergent sequence let us um, embed uh, x into X double star, okay. Consider uh, Xn as linear functionals on X star. Then for any X star in X star, the sequence x star of xn which is convergent is bounded okay then the uniform boundedness principle implies the following Theorem Let X be a normed vector space. Let XN be weakly convergent sequence in X then Xn is bounded okay uh, there is a little uh, remark here which is useful okay to know okay let D be a dense set subset in 
X star let Xn be sequence in X such that for every D star in D the sequence D star of Xn is convergent. So we have pointwise convergence but not on the pure space six star is only on D, okay? So if that's the case, then then Xn is weakly convergent. So you need just uh, weak convergence, uh, not on the entire dual space, but on smaller space. But you need to be able to generate the entire space from that smaller space. Indeed. Okay. Indeed, uh, we forgot one little assumption here, be a bounded sequence, sorry, we need to assume boundedness to help us be a bounded sequence, okay? So, let x star belongs to x star and assume that uh, x star of xn does not converge converge or in fact what we can do yeah we can show that okay uh, because it's bounded. So what we can do is that we can show that this real sequence to show that it's convergent, it's enough to show that uh, it's Cauchy. Okay, so let us prove it's Cauchy. Let X star, uh, let us prove, let us prove that X star of N is Cauchy in R. Okay. Uh, let epsilon be positive. Uh, we know by the density of D by the density of D there exists D star in D such that the norm of X star minus D star is less than epsilon. In fact, we'll see later on that it's not really epsilon that we need. We need maybe epsilon over something, but we'll check it out. Okay? Let N and M greater than 1. Then we have X star of xn minus x star of xm absolute value this is less or equal absolute value of uh, x star minus d star of xn minus xm plus d star of xn minus d star of xm. Okay? And this would be less than norm of x star minus d star, the norm of xn minus xm, 
plus uh, absolute value of d star of xn minus d star of xm. Okay, so what happened now? We know that d star of xn will be convergent, therefore this we can make it less than epsilon. And the extents they are bounded, therefore this is lambda m the norm, and this one here is less than epsilon. So what we're going to find is the following. So this is less than okay, uh, epsilon time the soup of the norm of xn minus xm when n and m are both greater than 1, plus here d star of xn minus d star of x n. Okay? So what we do, we go since d star of x n is convergent, then there exists there exists n zero greater than one such that absolute value of d star of x n minus d star of xn uh, this is less than epsilon for n m greater than 1 so this will imply that the x star of xn minus x star of xm less than epsilon m plus epsilon epsilon m plus 1 where m is an upper bound of the diameter of the x lens. So here we see that x n is Cauchy. So x n star is Cauchy in R. So it is convergent. Conclusion for any x star in x star, we have x star of xn is convergent. Okay, so here if I go back a little bit and I correct this statement, okay, so what we need to do here is the xn is bounded, yes, so here what we want is not truly uh, weakly convergent, but the conclusion is that uh, uh, then all this, let us remove all this and let us rewrite it then for any x star in x star x star of xn is convergent. Okay, so okay, the following then is true theorem. Okay, let D be a dense subset of X star. Okay, let Xn be in X such that X n such, such that for any for any d star in d okay d star of xn converges in r to d star of x for some x in x and now the conclusion is then for any x star in x star x star of xn converges to x star of x meaning that xn converges weakly weakly to X. So here what's interesting is the fact that you can check the weak versions to 
points, but not on the entire space, only on a smaller size. It, sometimes this is very useful, especially when the space has a shoulder basis, okay? Example of this, okay? Let's take x equal little l2, okay? So we know that x star is equal to little l2 as well. Is anybody in the bathroom? I mean, is the bathroom open? Go close it. I can see it's open. But sigma of e i star x n squared. This is less or equal sigma from one to infinity e i star of x n squared, which is the norm of x n squared. Okay, and since the x n's are bounded then we get so sigma from i equal 1 to n is going to be uh, less alpha i squared so it's less than this uh, limit but each one of them is less than this which is less or equal than the soup of the norm of the x n's squared when n is greater than 1 less than okay therefore this is for every capital n Okay, so this tells me that the series from 1 to infinity is convergent. Okay, so x equal alpha i okay, equals sigma of alpha i e i from 1 to infinity is in L2. Okay, so next also we have what? We have that limit of e i star of x n when n goes to infinity is equal to alpha i equals to e i star of x. So somehow the sequence x n converges weakly to x uh, in L2 but the weak convergence here is only generated by the e n's or the e i star not the entire space. So of course what we need to prove next is that uh, okay so now once we have this then we can say easily that for any x in the span x star in the span of the ei stars okay we have limit of x star of xn equal x star of x when n goes to infinity. So we, remember, when you are in the span, you are only uh, uh, finite linear combinations of the EIs. So here we have the limit, just the properties of the limits, and then of course we can go now to the closure, huh? then, and this is of course the property we just used because the span will be depth in its closure, then for any x star in the span closure of, of the EIs okay we have limit of x star of the xn's equal to x star of x and finally we just need to notice that uh, uh, the span if you look at the span of the EIs closure this is exactly L2 star and this will tell us that the sequence converges. So you see, this is really interesting. Sometimes, sometimes linear functionals that work with the entire dual space. Next, let us look, let us look at the case of finite uh, dimensional space. So we have a theorem. Okay, let X be finite dimensional 
vector space okay then weak conversions and non conversions are the same so we know of course that the norm conversions implies the weak conversions all the time so what's interesting here is the converse that the weak conversions implies the norm conversions proof the proof is very simple okay let x be the span of e1 e k where k is the dimension of x so we know that for every x in x uh, x is equal to sigma of alpha i e i i from 1 to k uniquely okay define as we did in the case of L2 e i star from x into r by uh, sigma of alpha j e j j from 1 to k consider alpha i okay it's easy to see that e i star is a linear functional but because we are in a finite dimensional space so it's continuous it is in uh, x star okay now let x n be uh, sequence in X such that limit of E I star of X n when n goes to infinity exists in R for any I equals to 1, 2 all the way till K Okay. Uh, let x equal sigma of limit of e i star of x n e i when n goes to infinity i from one to k. Okay. Then. norm of xn minus x it's uh, equal to the norm of sigma of ei of xn minus limit ei star limit ei star of xn time ei from 1 to k it's less or equal than the soup of the norm of the EIs I'm sigma absolute value EI star XN minus limit of EI star XN from 1 to k and clearly this will imply that limit of the norm of xn minus x when n goes to infinity is equal to zero. So here, if we have weak conversions, then we have non convergence. Notice how we did not even assume that xn is a bounded sequence. Okay. Now, uh, what happened in the case of infinite dimensional vector spaces? The answer is that that's not the case okay remark okay let x be equals to l2 as we defined before okay consider the sequence en the sequence en in l2 so it is bounded because their norm is 1 and we know also that uh, 
for any x star it's very easy to see that for any x star in L2 we have x star of E n limit on n goes to infinity is equal to zero. And in fact, the way to do it, you can use the EI star, the, the, the theorem we looked at in the example before. Huh? So uh, EI star of E n will all co converge to zero. It's almost uh, uh, for uh, because the sequence by itself, if n is bigger than i is equal to zero. So that's why uh, the limit will be zero. And since, again, you have it on the EI stars, we can go to the span, we can go to the closure of the span, and we get this conclusion that for any x star in L2, limit of EX, uh, x star EN is equal to zero. In other words, the sequence EN converges weakly, weakly, uh, to zero in L2. But obviously it does not converge in norm to L2 because their norm are all equal to 1, okay? But fails to converge okay, strongly to 0. Okay, so this is not true in the case of uh, infinite dimensional space, okay? One more thing here, so we have just introduced the weak star topology as we did for the weak topology we can look at x star and uh, consider a topology defined by the following so here uh, we can look at here fix x in x okay so again we're taking x a normal director space and we're looking at x star the dual space of x okay and you consider for uh, not only for x for any finite set sorry let's just fix x1 xn in x epsilon positive and we can consider this the basis of x star in the dual space such that x star of xi is less than uh, oh, I'm sorry minus fix x0 star in the dual space uh, such that we have this minus x star 0 of xi less than epsilon for i equal 1 n. So this will define what we call the unit ball for the uh, for a topology which is a whole topology because there is a separated. In other words you can consider the semi-norms uh, on x star we can consider the absolute value of x star of x so this is px and the family px when x belongs to x has the separation property exactly separation property so you see and this is the basis this family here will be a basis for the uh, to define the open sets as we did in the case of weak topology and this way we have a Hausdorff topology this, this we this will define this will define a Hausdorff topology on x star okay so uh, this topology is called the weak star topology. This topology is called 
the weak star topology on uh, X star uh, notation okay we will use sigma of X star X also we will use weak star for this topology okay so keep in mind the weak star topology and the weak topology huh? so on this is very very on X star we have Sigma of X star X double star that is the weak topology and we have Sigma being a dual space Sigma of X star to X which is the weak star topology so we have two topologies on uh, on the dual space on the dual space uh, there is another problem so first of all let us as we did for the weak topology let us define the convergence definition okay uh, let x and x star be as before in other words we have a normal vector space and we have x star which is its dual okay okay let x n star be sequence in x star we will say that x n star converges weak star to x star in x star if and only if so here we can use the the topology the definition of the topology using the neighborhoods etc etc but what we're going to see is that is the same as for any x in x we have limit of x uh, n star or x star x when n goes to infinity okay so we will write here notation I will write weak star uh, limit of x n star equal to x star when n goes to infinity uh, so note that if you are uh, convergent uh, uh, weakly in a remark if uh, xn star uh, converges weakly to x star in x star then it converges weak star then it also converges weak star to x star okay this is because of the embedding of x uh, into x double star into the bidirectional space Okay, the, the star convergence again as we said enjoys the same property as the weak convergence as well as the strong convergence okay and again if you have a strong convergence then you have a weak and weak star convergence as well okay theorem again the uh, uniform boundedness principle implies the following if theorem if 
xn star converges weak star n x star then the sequence is bounded okay uh, the next example is a little bit tricky and should be uh, there is a confusion there is a problem here uh, nice remark this is a very important remark uh, many many people uh, do uh, a mistake when it comes to the weak star topology uh, a space the problem with the weak star topology is that it depends on the space the space may enjoy uh, maybe the dual of different spaces what we call the pre-duals okay, we may not have one pre-dual so for example if you look at L1 just to illustrate this point we know that L1 is the dual of C0 sequence which converges to 0 okay and but it's also the dual of the sp space C of convergent sequences so remember right, if you take C0 the space of sequences which converge to 0 its dual is L1 and if you take the space of sequences which converges then again its dual is little L1 but if you take for example the sequence EN okay in uh, L1 so if you take EN let me call it EN star which is 0 because we are in a dual space that's why 0 uh, 0 1 0 etc the canonical sequence where 1 is on the nth term so if you look at uh, sigma of L1 C0 then EN star converges to 0 okay but if we consider sigma of L1 C then EN star does not converge to zero so one has to be very very careful when it comes to the weak star topology huh? because of the uniqueness of the pre dual that we have one or we have more so uh, it's not like the yeah huh? the uh, when you take uh, the case of the weak topology we are going to the dual space there is only one dual space but when you have a dual space when you are on dual space you have naturally X as the pre dual but you may have other spaces so we have to be very careful when we talk about the uh, uh, weak star topology to clarify which one what is the space when you write sigma of X star and you want to write here the space you have to be very careful which one that will define the weak star topology okay otherwise you may have some surprises there are even more uh, amazing differences in the case for example of little L1 between the duality with C0 or with C okay the next result is extremely important and fundamental and is known as the uh, uh, Araoglu theorem it was discovered by Alaoglu of course and that's why it bears his name so for this one we need to uh, remember so what we have we have quickly uh, uh, one can find this in any book on basic book on topology is what we call the Tikhonov theorem So you have uh, a family of topological spaces, so let's call them X alpha, T, alpha. Uh, these are a family of topological spaces. And we 
consider now the product of x alpha and on this one we can consider t the uh, product topology the product topology and what's happening is that Chikonov tells us that if all x alphas are compact then the product topology is also compact then the product of x alpha for the product topology is compact okay so armed with this now we have the theorem which is the direct consequence of the kind of theorem let this is of course the Alagoli theorem let x be a normal vector space okay uh, the unit ball the closed unit ball of x star uh, meaning b1 star okay is compact for the weak star topology for sigma of x star x okay and one way to see it okay proof as I said direct consequence of the Tikhonov theorem what you do you know that let x star belongs to the unit ball in the dual space then for any x for any x in x okay we have x star of x absolute value in the real line is less than the norm of x okay so uh, x star of x uh, x star of x belongs to the closed interval minus norm of x norm of x which is compact okay and we know in this case that the x star is uniquely identified as an element so x star by its images x in x okay which belongs here to the product of the segment minus norm of x norm of x x belongs to x so if we consider this segment they are all compact for the real line topology and if you consider the product of this real line topology on this product of these spaces we we'll see in fact that b1 star is uh, topologically homomorphic to the product of this product infinite products and the product topology on this product space is exactly the weak star topology on b1 star okay on b1 star therefore uh, Tikhonov okay Tikhonov okay implies that b1 star is compact for sigma of x star x uh, let me just make a, a quick a comment here in the case of some classical spaces uh, in some classical spaces capital X we may if for example X is dense consider a sequence Xn in X and uh, use a kind of argument uh, so uh, a kind of uh, uh, diagonal argument to show that uh, the uh, b1 star is indeed compact for the sigma x star x topology or the weak star topology so sometimes in some cases we can do it uh, directly without 
having access or using the Tikhonov theorem. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, some other properties, more properties. Okay, uh, here we have what we call the uh, lower semi-continuity of uh, the norm for the weak and weak star topology. So this is first stated. We have the following. We have the following result okay theorem let x be a uh, be let x be a normed vector space Okay. If Xn is weakly convergent to X, then the norm of X is less or equal lim inf. of the norm of xn when n goes to infinity. The same hold in x star for the weak star convergence. Proof? Okay. Let xn be in x such that xn converge weakly to x. Then, for any x star in x star, okay, we have uh, x and star of I'm sorry x star of xn less than the norm of x star norm of xn okay uh, let x star be in x star such that norm of x star is equal to 1 and x star 0 of x equals the norm of x. This is an application of Anbarah. Okay? So x 0 star of x equal norm of x equal limit of x0 star of xn when n goes to infinity which happens to be the same as limit inf of x0 star of xn when n goes to infinity. In particular we have x0 star of x equal norm of x less or equal than lim inf norm of x0 star norm of xn when n goes to infinity which gives norm of x less than lim inf of norm of xn okay now the case the case x star goes as follows. Okay, 
let xn star be in x star such that uh, sigma of x star x limit of xn star equal to x star so we have a weak star conversions okay let epsilon be positive there exists an x in x norm of x less or equal than 1 such that absolute value of x star of x is greater than the norm of x star minus epsilon okay now same argument as we did before gives that uh, norm of x star minus epsilon is going to be less than limit inf of the norm of xn star when n goes to infinity since epsilon was arbitrary we get absolute the norm of x star is less than limit infimum of the norm of x n star exactly the same as we did in the case of so of course this uh, apply uh, so this uh, uh, this there is a remark here as a direct application of this theorem okay so closed balls in X are weakly closed and closed balls in X star are weak star closed okay now look at uh, th this is not special to the balls by the way let us look at for example the case of convex convex sets because remember when we define the topologies the convex sets has a special behavior and this is exactly the case uh, in this one so here uh, let's theorem uh, let me just introduce a notation here um, since the intersection of two convex sets is convex then for any uh, a in x will define the conv of a to be the intersection of any c c convex such that A is a subset of C. Okay, smallest convex set which contains A, and if you assume first that they are closed, you get exactly the closure. So we can have the closure of A, which is the intersection of all the closed convex sets which contains A, because the convex. If you take a convex set and it takes its closure, it's also convex. So here, this is exactly uh, the intersection of C C closed convex and A subset of C. Okay, that's exactly the closure of the convex. Okay, so here we have theorem. Uh, let X be a normed vector space. Let X be a normed vector space. Uh, number one, number one the weak closure of a convex set is equal to its norm closure In other words, uh, a weekly, a convex set, a convex 
set is weekly closed if and only if it is non closed. Uh, keep in mind this, uh, this result is false. Uh, if we take the case of uh, little l2, remark, uh, this is very typical to complex sets. Huh? It's not true in the case of, for example, uh, any set. So if you take x equals little l2 and you take c equals e ends and greater or equal than 1, then c is non closed. c is non closed. Okay, but not weakly closed. Because the sequence here en converges weakly to 0 and 0 does not belong to c. And the fact that c is non closed because the uh, distance between any each, what we call uh, epsilon separated sets, huh? the distance between any en and em is equal to square root of 2, and that's why it has to be closed. Okay? You don't have any accumulation point, and therefore the closure is exactly C, which means C is closed, okay? Uh, proof of the theorem, okay? Uh, let C be a convex set, let C be uh, a convex set, convex non-empty subset of X, Since uh, strong convergence implies weak convergence, then C bar is a subset of C bar W. So C bar is the norm closure, C bar W is the weak closure of C. Okay? So now we need to prove, let us prove that C bar W is in C bar. Okay? Assume not. And let x belongs to c bar w, so we have an element which is in the weak closure, but not in the closure of c, eh? minus c bar, okay? As we said earlier, c bar is a closed convex set, okay? So now we can use the separation property that we proved from Anbanach theorem, so here there exist x star in x star, the dual space, such that the soup of x star X star of X of C, C in C bar, less or equal than 1, and X star of X greater than 1. The set x in x such that x star of x less or equal than 1 is weakly closed okay, and contains c. So c bar w is also in the set. OK, 
okay which means that x should be there so we must have x star of x less or equal than 1 uh, uh, okay let us um, call x there exists x0 x0 let x0 okay the set okay so this will imply this contradiction because we said that x star of x0 is greater than 1 okay the next result is very powerful and very useful okay which is the density of the weak star closure of the unit ball of x in the unit ball of the bidual but this is so powerful and before we do that we need some technical lemmas so before we state this uh, or we prove this uh, main theorem let us start by some uh, uh, technical lemmas okay so this we're gonna start with lemma one uh, let <coughs> x1 star xn star in x star such that uh, we need one more such that uh, x1 xi star of x equals 0 for i equal 1 to n minus 1 if then x n star of x is equal to 0 so in other words we have the kernel the null space of x n star which is included or which contains, sorry, which contains the intersection of the null space of the xi star r from 1 to n minus 1. Okay? Then what's amazing is, just a little bit of linear algebra, xn star belongs to the span of x1 star all the way to xn minus 1 star. So this is, uh, and by the way, anything that belongs to that condition is true if uh, any element in the span of x1 star all the way to xn minus 1 star, it will give us as well the, the, the property that the new space of xn star contains the intersection of all the other ones. Okay, proof of this lemma. Let A go from x into r to the power n minus 1 such that for every x we consider x i star of x then and b uh, goes from the range of x into r such that for every x i star of x we consider x n star of x Okay, so th this map is very well defined. B, specifically B, is very well defined. Why? Because if you take uh, another uh, x and y, because of the condition. Huh? So if if uh, x i star of x is equal to x i star of y, okay, then x minus y. And this is of course for any i between one and n minus 1, it belongs to the intersection of the null space of the xi stars, i from 1 to n minus 1, which implies, okay, our assumption that x minus y belongs to the null space of xn star, or xn star of x is equal to xn star of y. So this function b is, this map b is very well defined, 
and now uh, and Banach and Banach theorem will allow us to extend b to r to the power n minus 1 into r which we still denote by b and in this case there exists okay we have sorry we have b of alpha i's is going to be sigma of alpha i b of e i from 1 to n minus 1 where the e i's are the canonical basis of r n minus 1 which we denote by sigma of alpha i beta i so any linear functional on r n uh, minus 1 will be of this form and uh, this implies that if we take it down to b of x i star of uh, x for any x we know this is now equal to sigma of beta i x i star of x from 1 to n minus 1 and by definition because it's an extension of the map b this is equal to x n star of x for any x for any x in x in other words we have uh, obviously x n star equal sigma of beta i x i star i from 1 to n minus 1 or x n star belong to the span of x i star i between 1 and n minus 1 okay that's, so that's the proof of lemma 1 uh, lemma 2 Uh, let x1 star xn star be in x star we assume that they are linearly independent and are linearly independent then for any C1 Cn in R there exists X in X such that X i star of X equals C i i equal 1 to n I mean one can ask for example what happened if the X i stars are not uh, linearly independent and what happened in this case you have a condition of the CIs okay so meaning remark here so we can improve on on this assumption that if x1 xn star is equal to sigma of alpha i uh, xi star i from 1 to n minus 1 then we need to have the same condition on the CIs then we must have Cn equals sigma of alpha i Ci okay if that's the case then basically we can uh, if the conditions on uh, the xi stars is identical to conditions on the Ci's then we can we don't have to assume that the xi stars are uh, are uh, linearly independent okay so we can or basically we can look at the smallest number of the uh, vectors xi stars which are linearly independent the rank and move from there okay so let us go back and prove lemma 2 proof okay so
since the x1 star xn star are linearly independent then for example uh, none of them would belong to the span of the other ones and we can use lemma 1 to show that for every i, for any i equal 1 all the way to n there exists xi okay, in x such that xj star of xi equal to 0 for j different from i and xi star of xi not equal to 0 and we can even uh, up to a scalar we can divide by xi star of xi and assume in fact we may assume we may assume xi star of xi equal to 1 okay so in this case if I take x equals sigma of ci xi then xi star of x is equal to ci for i equal 1 all the way to n so it's a direct application of lemma 1 uh, the next lemma, lemma 3 uh, let x be a normed vector space let x be a normed vector space let x double star belong to x double star so we are in the bidual now and x1 star xn star belongs to x star in the dual space okay let E be the intersection for I between 1 and N of set of X in X such that XI star of X equal X double star of XI okay so these are your CI so we want to use lemma 1 and lemma 2 the problem is that in the lemma 2 uh, the XI stars are linearly independent but in fact the condition I mentioned uh, on the CI's will follow any linear combination coming up from the uh, XI's star so here in fact we may without loss of any generality assume that XI stars are linearly independent to conclude that then E is non-empty closed convex subset of X is a non-empty closed convex subset of X Okay. Moreover, moreover, the there exists x star in x star in the dual space such that x star is not zero and C in R such that the infimum of norm of X X in E is equal to C over norm of X star absolute value and E is included in X in E such that, sorry, x in x such that x star of x equal to c let us just say something here 
uh, we may have a little problem if all the xi stars are equal to zero. Okay, so let us assume that not all zero, not all the x stars. Okay, not all zero. So the xi stars are not all equal to zero, and we have this. So what does it mean? In fact, let me first explain this, and then we we move on. Number one. So this condition here. In fact, what he tells us, uh, what are these sets? These sets are just hyperplanes, uh, affine hyperplanes. Uh, and you have this intersection of hyperplanes, it's what's, what's known as flat uh, space or flat set. Okay, this is the definition of flat set. And it's not very hard to see that if we take E minus one element from E, we get a vector subspace. This is the definition of what we call flat spaces. Okay, so now what is this space here? What, what in fact, what we are saying is, what we are saying is that E is included in a hyperplane. Okay, uh, again the same. Uh, it's a flat space, but it's a hyperplane now, co-dimension one. So if you take one vector out from E and from the same set, from this set here, you get a new space of X star. Okay, so that's what the condition is, such that we have this in this here is very important, okay, for what's coming, okay? Proof. Okay, so as we said, without loss of generality. We may assume uh, x1 star, xn star linearly independent. Okay, so f from lemma uh, 2, we know that E is non empty. Okay being closed and convex follow from the properties of x i star. So these are continuous linear functionals and that's how we can get these two properties. Okay? So here If zero, assume uh, if zero belongs to E, okay, then x double star of each x i star is equal to zero, okay. Okay, and in particular. E is included in the hyperplane defined by x1 star x in x such that x1 star of x equal to 0. We know that x1 star is not equal to 0 and obviously we have c equal to 0. Okay, If we take c equals 0 then we have 0 equal the infimum of the norm of x x in E equals 0 over norm of x1 star equals 0. So everything follows nicely if we assume that 0 belongs to C. So assume now, assume 0 does not belong to E. Okay? And set, okay, set R to be the distance from 0 to E, which is the infimum of the norm of x. x belongs to E and we know because it's closed that the distance will be positive not equal to 0. In particular uh, we have then the uh, open ball centered in 0 with radius r intersect E is empty. So now we have two convex sets. One is closed and the other one is the ball. Okay, So it's an open convex set with zero being in its interior. Okay, so now we want to use the separation theorem of Anbanach over convex set. So this tells us what that there exists. There exists uh, 
x star in x star such that x star is not equal to 0 c in r such that the open ball with radius r intersects the hyperplane x in x x star of x equals to c is empty okay in other words it contains e and e is included in that hyperplane this is just the arbanach x equals c here so it contains e now obviously the distance from 0 to the hyperplane is going to be at least r so in other words we have the infimum of the norm of x x in x such that x star of x equals c is greater or equal to r otherwise they will meet with the open ball that's because the intersection this intersection here is empty okay so now we know since uh, absolute value of C is equal to X star X less or equal than the norm of X star norm of X okay for any X in uh, either set uh, because we can be in E or we can be in the hyperplane so both of them even in the hyperplane in uh, the hyperplane x in x such that x star of x equals c okay so uh, absolute value of c over x star is going to be less or equal than the infimum of norm of x x in x x star of x equal c okay next uh, since x star is not equal to 0 since x star is not equal to 0 there exists an x in x such that norm of x equals 1 and x star of x equal norm of x okay star okay since x star of c x over norm of x star is equal to c okay so r is going to be less or equal than the norm of this vector which is exactly this absolute value of x over the norm of x star okay so this implies that R, because on one hand we have uh, on the other hand for any x in E, so now we have for any x in E, okay, we have x star of x because it's a subset equals to C, so the same holds that absolute value C the same proof as we did up before talking about this one here this proof here it will imply that this is less or equal than the infimum of the norm of X X in E which is in fact R so we get that R is equal to the infimum okay, of absolute value C over norm of X star 
I'm sorry. is equal to absolute value of C over norm of X star. Okay? Okay. Which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Okay. So now, armed with lemma 1, 2, 3, we are able now to prove the main theorem. So, main theorem the one we mentioned okay let x be a, a normed vector space normed vector space okay uh, let b1 be the closed unit ball of X and B1 double star be the closed unit ball of X double star okay then B1 weak star is equal to B1 double star which means that B1 is dense for the sigma x uh, double star x star so this is the weak star topology of the bidual okay topology in B1 double star Okay. Uh, proof. Let proof. This is uh, maybe the most important uh, theorem in this case. Let x zero double star in B one double star. Okay. Uh, we need to show. We need to show that for any x1 xn stars in x star norm of xi stars equal to 1 okay and epsilon positive then the set uh, A, which is the intersection of X double star in X double star, such that X double star minus X zero double star of X i stars, absolute value less than epsilon, intersect B1 is not empty okay so again uh, what does that mean it means uh, let us just uh, first of all uh, the weak star topology on the bidual the this here okay is the basis for the open set so to claim that any open set will meet uh, uh, will meet the uh, span of B1 because uh, we're talking about any open set uh, uh, around the neighborhood uh, I mean around the point in the unit ball of X double star in Dubai dual will meet uh, the unit ball of X okay that will give us the density of B1 into B1 double star okay so but this is uh, these are the uh, neighborhood this is just an open neighborhood around uh, this is just an open neighborhood around an uh, open neighborhood around uh, x0 double star okay so first note note that if x belongs to capital X and norm of x less than 1 plus epsilon 
such that x i star of x equal x double star zero of x i for i equal one n then then x over 1 plus epsilon belongs to A. Okay? Indeed. Indeed. Okay? We have uh, x double star minus x zero double star not x, I'm sorry, we have because we want x here so we need to look at x i star of x over 1 plus epsilon minus x over 1 plus epsilon equal because remember, now we're looking at x as an element in the bidual, so we need to use the embedding, the canonical embedding of x into x bidual, and we get uh, that the uh, element in the embedding taken at x i star is exactly x i star of that vector because we are coming from x. Okay, so this is x i star of x over one plus epsilon. Sorry here. Uh, Okay, i is defined by x i star. Okay, minus x zero double star of x i. Okay, and the way we choose x i star of x over one plus epsilon minus uh, this is x i star of x, which is equal to minus. equal minus epsilon over 1 plus epsilon x i star of x. Okay? So in particular, if I take absolute value of x i star x over 1 plus epsilon minus x 0 double star x i star, this is equal to epsilon over 1 plus epsilon absolute value x i star of x which is less or equal than epsilon over 1 plus epsilon. Remember that the norm of x i star is 1, so here we have only norm of x, but norm of x is less than 1, right? so this is less than epsilon. So, so and because the norm of x over 1 plus epsilon is less than 1, so x also belongs to b1, so x belongs to a, the intersection of the neighborhood, as well as b1, okay, which we wanted. So basically, what we need to do here is to find uh, a vector x such that x uh, that satisfies this condition here, okay, this condition here, with the norm which is less than 1 over 1 plus epsilon, okay? And this is where we are going to get lemma 3 to help us out. So here, so we take set E equal x in x such that x double star of x i star is equal to x i star of x, okay, and this is for i equal one all the way to n, okay. So we know from lemma three that there exists e is not empty, and of course this lemma. Uh, to as well, but lemma three has all this information, and there exists x star in the dual space, 
not equal to zero a C in R such that uh, X star uh, E is a subset of X in X such that X star of X equal to C that's your hyperplane and that the infimum of the norm of X X in E okay, is equal to absolute value of C over the norm of X star okay so now let us just see so let X be in E so we have at least one then okay, we have X star uh, of C of X equals to C uh, no one more thing I'm sorry yeah we need to use lemma uh, lemma uh, okay so let x0 belongs to E okay then for any uh, x in the intersection of the null space of the xi stars okay then x plus x0 belongs to E okay Good. So, uh, so uh, x star of x plus x zero is going to be equal to x star of x plus x star of x zero equals to c, which implies which implies that x star of x is equal to zero. So whenever a vector x belongs to the intersection of the null space of the xi stars, it also belongs. So we have the intersection of the null space of xi stars is included in the null space of x star. So this tells us from lemma number two that x star, in fact, belongs to the span of x i star i between 1 and n. This is the one that we need if we conclude our uh, result here. So, so there exists alpha 1, alpha n, such that x star equals sigma of alpha i x i star from 1 to n okay which implies that c in fact is equal to sigma of alpha i uh, x double star of x i i from 1 to n okay zero in particular we have uh, C equal x0 double star sigma of alpha i xi from 1 to n okay or absolute value of C is going to be less than the norm of x0 double star the norm sigma of alpha i xi star okay i from 1 to n okay so now we're going to use the fact that we have norm uh, so this is of course or we're almost there x0 double star uh, norm of x star because x star is this this one which is less one than the norm of x star so in particular 
absolute value of c over the norm. So this is where we use that the norm of x0 double star is less or equal than 1, that we are in the unit ball of b1 double star. So this is less or equal than 1, okay? Okay? So the infimum of the norm of x, x in e, is less or equal than 1 which tells me that for every epsilon positive there exists an x in E such that norm of x is less than 1 plus epsilon and it's exactly what we wanted to be able to show that the intersection is not empty. A direct application of this, we're almost done with this lecture, a direct application of this is the, f the beautiful result, a beautiful result, okay, uh, direct application is the following beautiful result theorem okay let x be a normed vector space okay the uh, closed unit bow B1 of X is weakly compact if and only if X is reflexive. So this of course should remind us of the uh, theorem that we proved before in a previous lecture that uh, uh, space is finitely finite dimensional if and only if the unit ball is compact for the strong topology. So you see here the strong topology and the weak topology are different. So for example if you take the case of little lp we know for p bigger than 1 that these spaces are all reflexive okay because uh, the dual of lp is lq and the dual of curl q is lp and uh, they are infinitely dimensional so we know that the unit ball is weakly compact so this tells you that in the infinite dimensional case for example uh, the weak topology and the strong topology are really fundamentally different. We lost the compactness for the strong topology in the balls, closed balls, in any closed ball in fact and here we uh, got in the case of the reflexive Banach spaces we got the weak compactness, the weak compactness. So proof Uh, if B1 is weakly compact is weakly compact okay then B1 weak star closure is just B1 W the weak closure which is B1 because it is weakly compact so it's B1 which is dance from the previous theorem in B1 double star. So if B1 is equal to B1 double star, so definitely X is equal to X double star or X is reflexive. Okay? Uh, the converse follows easily from the allow allow glue theorem. And we know that the bidual ball is weak star compact and therefore uh, if we note here as I said that the here if x is equal to x double star then sigma of x uh, double star x star is just sigma of x x star. In other words, the weak topology on x is exactly the weak star topology on the bidual space, in the case of reflexive, of course. Uh, the last result uh, looks at the case of uh, separable, uh, <coughs> separable uh, separability and the weak topology, and we have the beautiful theorem.
the last theorem of this lecture, basically. Theorem. Uh, let x be a normed vector space. Okay? Uh, so we have sigma of x star x. So this is the weak star topology in the dual space is metri metrizable if and only if x is separable. So basically, if the space x is separable, then the weak star topology on the dual is generated by distance. And remember from a uh, little that we learned about metric spaces uh, when we reviewed metric spaces for these web nodes, we said that there are so many properties for the topology that is generated by distance that are not true in general in topological spaces. Okay, So it's very important when you know that the topology is coming from uh, a distance. Okay, So here proof. Okay. So first, uh, if x is separable, assume that if x is separable, then there exists a countable set xn and greater than 1 dense in x. And if we take now the distance between x star y star to be sigma of 1 over 2 to the n, uh, absolute value of x star of xn minus y star of xn divided by 1 plus x star of xn minus y star of xn, n from 1 to infinity, okay? It's well defined because this here, this quantity here is less than 1 and the function we are taking is sub-additive, so this is a true distance and it's very easy to see that uh, sigma if uh, we have the following that uh, xn star uh, sigma x star x converges to x star if and only if the distance from xn star to x star goes to zero. Okay, and we can also show that the the balls, the open uh, set for D, are also the open ball uh, set for the sigma of x star x, and this is how we generate the topology of the distance D as being D sigma x star x or the weak star topology. Okay. Conversely, it's a little bit tricky when you go to the converse. Conversely, okay, assume that there exists a distance d, there exists d defined on x star, okay, 0 plus infinity, a uh, distance function. Okay, such that the topology generated by D is the same as sigma of x star x. Okay, so if we take a set for any n greater than 1 set O n to be the open ball okay, x star in x star such that the distance from 0 to x star less than 1 over n so this is an open set this is just the open ball for D so it's also open for uh, for the sigma, uh, for the, from the assumption that we have, so, and we also know uh, we have the intersection 
of all the ONs is just reduced to the vector 0 of x star. Okay? So, since each ON is open for sigma, so 0 belongs to ON and ON is open for sigma of x star x therefore there exists x1 x kn in x such that okay the set uh, such that for uh, some epsilon positive the set uh, x star in x star such that x star of xi up to the value less than epsilon i equal 1 all the way to n this is in O n so it contains 0 okay but it's also this is a neighborhood for the sigma x star x topology so now let a be the union of all the x1 x k n for n from 1 to infinity okay so we claim that a uh, span closure of a is the entire x okay indeed okay let x star belongs to x star such that x star reduced to a is equal to 0 so then x star belongs to o n okay for every n okay so x star is equal to 0 so any element in the dual space which is equal to 0 on A will be equal to 0 everywhere and this of course from what we learned and Banach uh, will imply and Banach will imply okay, that the span of A is exactly X or X is separable. So, hope you enjoyed this uh, long lecture and see you in another one, okay?